Okay, audience, make some noise if you believe that Jackie needs her ass beat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yup, yup, yup. Yup, that's right. Mm-hmm. Clap if you think Marshall got some sugar in him. <laughs> Y'all ain't shit. <laughs> Alright, stop clapping. Damn. Oh, 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 hold on, hold on. Breaking news. Breaking news. Marshall has responded to the sugar allegations. Let's see what his response is. Marshall has responded to the sugar allegations. Marshall says, the only sugar I got goes on those fucking pancakes. <laughs> Y'all remember, y'all remember, hold on, y'all remember, hold on. You better get to powdering the sugar, Marshall. I know that's right. During Black Jesus Rose on the third day, so black women still, we rise month. <laughs>
Uh, I'm, I admire him for taking the high road in life. The journey, like his journey is something that I admire a lot. I'm inspired by. He's very honest. He's open. I can trust him. I can be myself with him. I love and respect him as a person. His family was like, girl, we sold. When, when is the wedding? When is the wedding? What I love about Bliss and Zach, and I'll talk more about that later on, I love how they talk about each other. And the same thing goes for Tiffany and Brett. When you ask them how they feel about their mates, it's not from a selfish place. They can literally pinpoint characteristics of their mate's personality, character, their values. It's not just, oh, I feel like this or I feel like that. It's, oh, let me tell you who this person is. Did y'all notice that about those two couples? I love that. Okay, now you have Kwame and Chelsea. Now. Kwame, it's really getting harder and harder for me to like you. It really is getting harder and harder for me to like you. Um, this shopping scene with Chelsea was so cringy because clearly Chelsea is very, very happy. You know, she's excited to be going um, shopping, you know, just to be doing whatever she can with you. And you just come off so snippy. And I feel like you have a lot of fucking nerve. So Kwame brings up the fact that earlier that day in the morning, Chelsea woke up and he could tell that something was wrong with Chelsea. And um, he asked her, you know, are you okay? And her answer to him well, was, well, do I look okay? And Kwame was bringing that up at the shop wherever they were. And he was like, you know, I just feel like, that's just like, do you understand like how that comes across when you say things like that? And I'm like, not this egg shaped ass bitch. And I'm over here just like, not your egg shaped ass forgetting that the last time we saw you and most likely the last time that you and Chelsea were out, you were all up in Micah's face at her fucking birthday. Like, why are we not having that conversation? And I felt like Chelsea was tiptoeing around that shit too. It's like, girl, no, keep it real. This man was all up in Micah's face at your fucking birthday party. Can we really have that conversation? So the nerve of you now to feel like some type of way because she's telling you, well, do I look okay? Now, granted, like in reality, when you're in relationships and somebody does that, that can come off of, like that can come off passive aggressive right but we've been watching you guys' journey from the get-go my nigga alex kwame did y'all notice that as the episodes just keep going uh, chelsea ain't saying kwame no more she's saying kwame i'm sorry <laughs> she said listen i done got my nigga okay i don't need to be I, she's like she's saying listen i done got my nigga nigga secured i don't need to keep saying this motherfucker's name real uh uh, correctly. Kwame. Girl, what happened to Kwame? Girl, what happened to Kwame, Alex, Mbutu, Himabe? Like, what happened to knowing all his damn African names, girl? <laughs> and you were saying it correctly at the at the, at the the beginning. What's happening now? I, I'm not going to run. What's happening? But yeah, he just was being very snippy with her, and you see her being very flirty with him. So I just, I don't know. I, I just... I didn't get it and she brought up the fact that she feels like he nitpicks everything which he actually does here's the thing Kwame is not happy with you Kwame does not want you there's a lot of things that I feel Kwame is complaining about and had you really been his preference of the white women's like Micah Micah is literally his white women preference like his preference is white women's in general but Micah is his white women's preference. Do y'all get what I'm saying? Like the way he talks to Micah, the sparkle, the twinkle in his eye when he talks about Micah. Like it's not the same as when he looks at you. It's not the same as when he talks about Chelsea. So a lot of the things that I, I'm convinced, a lot of the things that Kwame is, is complaining about, he would not be complaining about if you were Micah. Am I wrong? Let me know if I'm wrong. Um, he also talked about, you know, 
him being in Seattle, he just feels like he has no escape. Like in Portland, he had things that could he he could escape to. Like he had his friends, he had um, extracurricular activities. He's like here in Seattle, I don't really have any escape from you. And I can empathize with that. However, sir, why don't you go outside? Like go the fuck outside. You know, he, of course we know he works remotely, so he works from home, but like go the fuck outside, sir. There are stores, there are extracurricular activities outside. Go outside. You're in Seattle. It is a big freaking city. Like there's a lot to do. Like people move all the time for the sake of relationships and you're moving for the sake of a marriage. Go the fuck outside, sir. You are literally from Ghana. You are literally from Ghana. Like, if there's anybody who's resourceful, it is us immigrants. We know how to find the sunshine in some bullshit, okay? Go the fuck outside. Go outside. Like, I'm not understanding what he's complaining about. Like, I get it, but I don't get it. Go the fuck outside. One thing about Chelsea, she gonna ask the necessary questions. I done told y'all that many, many times. She's like, okay, do you see yourself saying yes at the altar? I need to know. I need to know. I need to know. Tell me, baby boy, cause I need to know. And he says yes. All right. Um, now we go to Brett and Tiffany. Brett and Tiffany go and they meet Brett's friends. Um, Brett says Tiffany is the first time that he's met someone who understands him and, and, and wants to see him improve. I'm like, well, damn. I think he even said um, to his friends that this is the first time that he was in love. I'm not sure. Maybe he says that during uh, uh, later on in the episode. Um, he said that Tiffany just lets him be, oh no, Tiffany said that he just lets her be herself. Like, they do, the way they just talk about each other is just crazy. What I loved about what Brett told his friends, he said, you know, there is so, there is a poverty, there's generational poverty in my family. And I see myself breaking that with Tiffany. He, he didn't say, I see myself breaking that with a woman like Tiffany. He didn't say, I see myself breaking that, you know, one day with someone. No, he said, I see myself specifically breaking that generational curse with Tiffany. During Black Women's Black Jesus Rose on the third day month. So still as Black Women's, I'm going to make sure still she rise month. Okay? Like, I love that. Make it plain. Make it specific. Period. And he literally, the way he speaks about this woman, to me, it just gives me chills. And then hearing his friends say things like, you know what, we're rooting for y'all. Like, and like we, we, we want you to have a black woman. They were stressing black woman, black woman, black woman. Which had me thinking, which had me thinking for a moment, um, Brett, were you out here in these, uh, unseasoned streets what's going on are they just happy for black love in general or are they just happy you stopped bringing them unseasoned meat like what were you bringing to your friends were you bringing um women who don't wash their legs when they shower were you bring like what were you were you bringing women that don't that don't use washcloths when they bath when they bathe brent what kind of women's was you bringing to your friends okay <laughs> That had me think. Well, I'm the only one who was thinking that. I was thinking that. I'm like, okay, Brett, hold on now. Um, so yeah, I, I, I just, I love it. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I'm loving it. Love it. Um, you have Micah and Paul. They're on a date. Um, I don't really care. Next, um, Bliss and Zach. Okay, so they meet. Oh, they're still at the meetup with. Her sisters, um, Bliss's mom is crying. One thing about mamas, they gonna start crying. The minute they 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 daughter brings somebody to them and they talk about merge, when, moms are gonna cry. What is it? You know, I don't know because I'm not a mom, but am I gonna do that with if my future daughter brings somebody? I'm saying my sister's just gonna start crying. Her mama was crying. You know, um, I love that her siblings were putting her on such a pedestal. They told Zach, listen, she is our princess. She is our everything. She is deserving of everything good under the sun. Um, Brett starts telling them about what he loves about Bliss. And honestly, I just, I'm sorry, not Brett, Zach. Zach, I am rooting for you, brother. I really am. I, I'm rooting for Bliss to do what Bliss wants. 
especially given the, the, the circumstances between you two, but I'm really, really rooting for Zach. I'm really, really rooting for Zach. Um, Zach says that he loves her intelligence, her drive, her fierceness, her thoughtfulness. Uh, that's what gets him. He feels that they could impact the world together. Um, I mean, when is the last time you've had a man say that about you? And Zach has said that about her several times during the show, even before he met her. Um, he said that. Um, you know, he had a moment where he told her family about Princess Fiona. Um, you know, they were not pleased, as we all are not pleased about his Princess Fiona moment. And uh, I don't think Bliss was too fond of him bringing her up either. Like, she was like, we don't have, we really don't have to discuss this. But one thing about Zach, he's too open. He a little too open. Baby, they was going to see, they was going to see the footages. We don't, re <laughs> Bliss was like, we really don't even talk about this right now. They will see the footages. They will see the footages, sir. And I, I commend Zach for finally, like, speaking what I always believed, which was his big fear when it came to Bliss was her family not accepting him, right? So he speaks that to her family, but also as he says that, I mean, there's another side. It's like they're listening to it, they accept it, but they're also looking at it, and I could tell they were looking at it as, well, if things didn't work out with Princess Fiona, you most likely wouldn't be here. Like if Princess Fiona was actually nice to you and if she was caring to you, we wouldn't be sitting here having this conversation. You wouldn't be engaged to bliss, you know? So some can look at it as, well, all things work out. Some other people can look at it as, well, you had an L. You're only here because you took an L. How I choose to look at it is everything works out. And I do strongly believe that not only is bliss the better choice for him, but also that he really does want to marry bliss. Um, you know, they were asking him about his family and, um, you know, he said that, you know, his mother passed away. So, you know, as they're considering bringing kids to the world, you know, they're only going to have one mom and Bliss's mom saying, if you become, if you marry my daughter, I'll be your mom too. You don't have, I'll be your mom too. I'll be both of your moms. I'll be your mom too. <laughs> I need a moment. How beautiful was that moment? Honestly, how beautiful was that moment? I, I just, I, I couldn't. I, I couldn't. Okay, guys, so now we have Chelsea and Kwame. They're meeting her mother's side of the family. It was just funny to see where Chelsea gets her personality from. Clearly, she gets it from her mom, her aunties, her cousins. You know, her nieces and nephews were there. It just was so much family. Um, they just came across so wholesome. So Chelsea is there, and she's describing Kwame to them. He's this beautiful man who has a beautiful voice. Is my sister on crack? Chelsea, is my sister on crack? Clap if y'all think Chelsea's on crack. Yeah, I thought so. This girl is on crack. She is either on crack or whatever dick Kwame is laying down on this girl's pussy. I do not want, I don't ever want to experience that. Cause bitch, what kind of voice did he have? It was everything but beautiful. Not that crusty ass song that he's saying to you, got the real thing. Not that crusty ass song he's saying to your ass in the pods before he gave you that, you are the, you are my cockies speech. Really? And did you notice how she didn't tell her family about that? You are the cocky. Speech. Did y'all notice that shit? You knew not to bring that shit to your family. You knew not to bring that shit to your colonizer ass family. But you know what? I mean, Chelsea and her family don't really give colonizers. They give like friends of colonizers. So Chelsea's mom takes Kwame to the side. First thing she asks, are you good with Rocky? Because baby, white people love their dogs. Let me tell you something. White people love dogs more than they love humans. She said, is everything okay with you and my dog ass grandson? And Kwame was like, yeah, we cool, we cool. No, damn well he ain't cool with that damn dog. He's so tired of Chelsea's dog. <laughs> when I tell you, that man is so tired of pretending like he likes Chelsea and her motherfucking crusty ass dog. He is tired. But he lied to her mama about liking a dog. And then he brought up the fact that when he was in Ghana, he had a pet squirrel. Now, fellow Africans, y'all come in the comments, tell me what y'all thought about that shit. I didn't think that was something he needed to share. A pet squirrel? Really? Sir? Okay. 
Oh, is there squirrels in Ghana? How the fuck squirrels get to Ghana? Well, you know what? Everything did start in Africa, so. Mm hmm. Yeah, Africa. Africa would have all the animals. Mm hmm. Yeah, everything would start. Yeah, so you know what? It makes sense that Africa got squirrels. Shit. Mm -hmm. But how did squirrels come to. Okay, that's another video for another time. Um. Baby, you need to share that with them white people. Because then the thing is, they oh, he had a, now they always going to share that to people. Oh, you know he had a pet squirrel. He has a pet squirrel back in Ghana. Yeah. Kwame, Kwame, tell them about your pet squirrel. Like, you're going to be at Easter dinner and they're going to bring that shit up. Did you know that Kwame had a pet squirrel? Oh, where's the squirrel now? How's the squirrel doing? Like, no, no. Don't be sharing that type of shit with white people. White people get really funny about that shit. You know, they love animals, bitch. They love and white people love animals, period. Um, Kwame, <laughs> Kwame, Alex, <laughs> that's what they really gonna start calling his ass. That white family gonna start calling his ass Alex. I'm talking, I'm telling you, after a good 90 days, they gonna like, okay, yeah, so we're not gonna be saying his Negro name anymore. <laughs> he is Alex. <laughs> Alex, what about your pet squirrel back in Gaina? Okay, they're not gonna say Kwame no more, okay? But anyway, Alex talked about how he came to the States from Ghana when he was eight years old, I believe. He, I believe he said six or eight. And when he said that, he talked about having older siblings, so he's the youngest, which makes a lot of fucking sense. Um, but when he said that, I'm like, oh, so this man has been in America for most of his life. So this man is actually detached from his parents. Your parents are back in Ghana. So now I don't really believe you about the whole holding your mother's values to such an esteem. I don't believe you. I think it's a good thing to say, especially as a child of immigrants. But sir, you've been in America doing your own thing for more than 25 years. So now I don't believe you having those morals and my mother this my mother that i don't believe you i kind of feel like that's a scapegoat i i, I kind of feel like you're using that as an excuse because you've been detached from that um you're not really practicing the values that they instilled in you while they're all the way in another country let's be for free let, let, let's be for real let's be for fucking real and then you are a former athlete so you were doing a lot of traveling um a lot of times when these people play soccer, especially soccer out of an American league, they're traveling all over the world. So now I don't buy it. Now I really feel like you're, you're really gaslighting Chelsea uh, with this whole your mother thing. We'll get back. We'll, we'll, we'll get more into that later on. So it's wedding dress time. By, by the end of episode nine, we see all the girls getting dressed up in their wedding dresses. I really don't give a fuck about none of these girls except for Tiffany, Bliss, and Chelsea. Is it me or they, my, my three faves look their best? Like, my three faves ate down, okay? First of all, Tiffany's dress, the details, and she said how, how much she believed that Brett would, would appreciate the details. Yes, he will, girl. We all, we all appreciate those details. Um, Bliss looked heavenly with the flowers all over the dress. Like, um, Chelsea looked radiant. I mean, my faves... A down. 10, 10, 10s across the board, period. Okay, so now we're on episode 10. And again, just a reminder, I am going to talk about Jackie and Marshall, but I'm saving them for the end because I have a lot to say. So we're in the wedding suites. You know, the fellas over here, the women are over there. Um, we see Kwame and Kwame's talking, to, he's, Kwame's talking to his friends about marrying Chelsea. He says that marrying her makes her life easier and his life does not get easier. And see, I have so many thoughts about that. Because as a man, ain't that what you're supposed to do? Like, as a man, isn't your goal to lighten the load of a woman because at the end of the day, the woman is always going to bear your load. Like you're gonna lighten her load, but as a woman, a good woman, she's going to bear your load naturally. First of all, physically, she's going to bear your child. Why would she, as a woman, as a woman, why would you not want to be with a man who's going to make life easier for you? 
Because you as a woman, when you get into the home, you're the homemaker. You're lightening his load. Let's, let's be serious here. That is the goal. Like that's supposed to be like the main goal of marriage. Marriage used to be something that people did for generational wealth. Women would marry. Women were literally from the time they were a child were brought up to seek men who would financially make their lives easier so that when they're being a homemaker, they ain't got to worry about finances. They don't have to worry about where they're going to live. They don't have to worry about what they're going to eat. The man has a woman who's going to be his helpmaid. And while he's in the world, getting whatever money he's getting, bringing it back home, like, you know what I mean? Like, and then as time has evolved, yes, us women are working, us women are getting our own bag. But at the end of the day, what does it profit a woman, literally, to marry a man if it's not going to make your life better? Somebody has to explain that to me. Kwame, Kwame, Alex. Are you not from Ghana? See, again, there goes that detachment to me. That's not your mother and your father's value speaking. You don't got Americanized. Because see, back in Africa, that is what a man does. The man is the provider. The man provides. He's the provider. He's there to lighten her load. He's there to make her life easier. Even the men who believe in, who don't believe in monogamy, even the men who have several wives, when they have several wives, they are all under one roof. Not this shit that you hear Nick Cannon and these Akon niggas, not the shit they talking about. We're talking about real polygamy, where Africans would literally get married to several women and they all have to live under one roof. All their kids, their kids know they have a natural mother, but they have several other mothers. They have bonus mothers. That is the goal, to make life easier for the women so the women can groom the children, the women can, can be the homemakers, the women can do all of the other women things. Are you sure you're from Ghana? I don't know. Like, so, Kwame, shut the fuck up. I'm tired of your ass. Like, I'm really tired of your ass. I'm tired of you. Like, please, like, see past your big ass nose and, and, and step into fucking reality. What is the, what was the point of you wanting to get married? Seriously, what is the point of you wanting to get married? Again, later on, Kwame and um, Chelsea have a photo shoot. Baby, what kind of photo shoot was this? Was this the engagement shoot or a soft porn? What the fuck was I watching? What was I looking at? They was down there and they fruited the looms, child. They getting it in. It's just, I mean, it was cute. I just don't think we need to see that. Um... Now, in that scene, was it me or Alex, a.k.a. Kwame, looked fine? Okay, I know what y'all gonna say. I know what y'all gonna say. Should I take my medication? Let me know, because I Kwame looked good to me in that scene, y'all. He ain't look good to y'all? Should I cut the cameras? Okay, cut the cameras. Baby, Chelsea is happy as hell. When I tell you, Chelsea... Chelsea is basking in the glory of black dick. When I tell you that girl been eating that man ass, drinking his penis juice, she is the happiest she's ever been, okay? Like, Chelsea, girl, I need you to come back down to reality. Like, sister, it, I don't know. Does she not see that Kwame don't like her? Or is it me? Kwame does not like you, girl. But, okay. Ignorance is bliss, child. Um... So they talk about Kwame still needing to speak to his mom. He doesn't think that his mom's going to come to the wedding. He says that his parents are very controlling over his dating life. Um, and that's deeply rooted in their West African beliefs. And again, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Because you've been here since you were eight years old. Your parents are still out there. So I don't believe you. Something, the math is not mathing. The math, the math is not mathing. The math is not mathing. Now, when I went to Florida International University, I did not major in mathematics, but bitch, I know two and two equals four. And right now, bitch, you making two and two equal 12. It's not mathing, okay? He was saying that, oh, his parents don't believe in sex before marriage. Well, here you are on Love is Blind on national television, sinking your black penis into colonizer pussy for the world to see before marriage. So what are we talking about, Alex?
What are we talking about, Alex? Cut the shit. Cut the shit. Chelsea's like, well, you know, would we need your mother's approval to get married? And it's like, see, this is the one time that Chelsea's not asking the real questions. Girl, he don't need his mother's approval. He needs Micah's approval. Cause see, you still have not talked to this nigga about why his he, he was all up, he was playing in your face at your birthday party. That man do not need his mama's approval. That man needs Micah's approval. Okay? Am I the only, a, a blind person can see that shit? Love may be blind, but bitch, I'm not. Okay? That man is playing in your face, Chelsea. Good luck to you though. I'm rooting for you, but sis, this does not look good for you. Okay? Tiffany is at home stressed out. She's stressing out over the wedding. We see Brett come in and Brett comforts her. And, you know, she's just talking about how everything about the wedding is stressing her out. You know, bridesmaid dresses, flowers, you know, the preacher, the decorations. And I'm like, I know good and damn well Love is Blind is not having y'all take care of all that shit. All that money Kinetic is making, all that money Love is Blind is making off y'all niggas, Y'all are in y'all fourth season and Love is Blind is, Love is Blind better be covering every charge from your weddings. Now, I, somebody needs to confirm that for me. I need to ask a cast member or something. Is Love is Blind not covering your expenses? Why are you guys stressed out about anything? Y'all should just be showing up. Y'all should be picking out y'all dresses and sending, sending a bill to Nick Lachey and them. Nick and Vanessa need to be paying that shit. Netflix need to be paying that shit. Kinetic need to be paying that shit. Why are you stressed out, my sister? And good for Brett for sitting there and comforting her. And, you know, she cried in his arms, which is beautiful to see. But again, why is my sister Tiffany stressed out over this shit? Y'all should be paying for this. Not these cast members. I need someone to confirm to me whether or not these cast members are paying for everything. Like, out of pocket. Because if they are, they're being fucking scammed. They're being scammed. And no, I don't want no stipend. You need to be paying for everything. You need to be paying to fly my mama out. You need to be paying to fly my, my friends, my family out. Everybody need to get flown out. They need to be in hotel. Y'all need to be covering all that. Period. We see Kwame making calls to his mama on WhatsApp. She not answering. Um, and he calls his brother. And what did his brother say again? His brother was basically like, baby, do, do what's best for you. You know how mama is, child. Do what's best for you. You want to marry these white women? Marry the white women during black women's black Jesus rose on the third day so black women still they rise month. Do what you want to do. Do what you want to do. And again, that tells me that that whole your mama situation, shut that shit up. You full of shit. You know, you don't really care about your mama and her approval of this. If you did, you would have never did the show. You would have never did the show. So now we see Brett and Tiffany. Brett takes Tiffany out on this romantic date just because he saw how stressed out she was and he wanted to what? Lighten her load. Are you watching this, Kwame, Alex? He my man. Are you watching this shit? This is what a husband does. A husband makes things easier for his wife. You see, Brett and Tiffany, they married already. They're married. They, they're, they're acting like husband and wife already. This is what a husband does. He lightens the load of his wife because he knows how important her energy being right needs to be to their household. So that's why he's, you see, you like, I need people to pay attention to how Brett is moving. Brett takes her on a beautiful helicopter romantic date, takes her around the city. There's more. That's not, that's not it though. There's more. Then he takes her on this romantic dinner where he took a couple pictures from his phone, literally from his cell phone of her holding her ring. He blew them up for her to see at the dinner table. Do you know how much that costs? That don't even cost that much for you to take a couple pictures of somebody, print it out, maybe get it printed out at Walgreens or your local CVS, have it, have it blown up and put it for display that doesn't even cost a lot of money like i really want y'all to see that there are men out there who get it brett gets it brett gets it this is what you call courting this is what you call courting can y'all tell me one one example of kwame courting chelsea during this experience exactly 
Anyway, Brett goes on to say, listen, I know you're stressed out, but I'm not stressing about nothing. I'm not worried about this. I found my person. Point blank, period. Okay? I love this. If Brett and Tiffany don't make it, baby, I'm done. If Brett and Tiffany do not make it down the aisle, it's a wrap for me. I don't know how I'm going to emotionally deal with that. Okay, so now we have Zach and Bliss meeting Bliss's dad. Y'all... Was it me or I felt bad for Zach? I felt bad for Zach. Because now we were seeing his biggest fear become reality with this meetup with her dad. So first of all, it's her dad and her stepmom. And honestly, I just felt like the energy just wasn't giving. Like from the beginning, it just was not as welcoming as when they met her mother and her sisters. They just were not there to welcome him. They were there to grill his ass, okay? Um, her dad seemed a little cool at first, but then he started taking little jabs at Zach. Um, Zach was trying to explain to him, like, what he does as a litigator. Her dad didn't give no fucks. Her dad did not give a fuck. This nigga was like, first of all, this nigga talked too much. He was like, this man talks too damn much. Like, <laughs> he just was dragging Zach, like, my God. Um... He tells her dad about how passionate he is about the court system, the criminal court justice system, and how messed up it is and how he wants to, he strives to make changes. He didn't give a fuck. Her daddy did not give a fuck about none of that power to the people speech that Zach was trying to give his ass, okay? He was not here for that motherfucking Woodstock speech that Zach was trying to give his, he wasn't here for that Susan B. Anthony speech that Zach was trying, he wasn't here for none of that shit, okay? I'm here to talk about my daughter, who the fuck are you? What do you fucking do? And what you gonna do for my daughter? Okay? Here's what I've done for my daughter. What the fuck you gonna do? That was the type of energy that her daddy was stepping with. And to be honest, even though he was very cold to Zach, I kind of felt like this is a father's place. Like, literally, he had all the questions. He had all the smoke. Because this is his daughter. And I think that on this show, not just on this show, but just life in general, a lot of women don't have our dads in our lives. So we're not used to having a pit bull for a daddy. I didn't have my dad growing up. And watching Bliss and her dad, even though he was rude, I do feel that that energy is needed. It was a balance between, listen, your mom is over here crying and shit, talking about, I'll be your, I'll be your mama too, baby. I'll be your mama too. Her dad was like, bitch, you ain't got a second daddy over here. You got to prove yourself. Do not call me father. <laughs> bitch, I am not your daddy, okay? But, you know, me being on my Tierra Marie shit, I ain't had no daddy when I was growing up. Uh, that's why I'm why and I don't give a fuck. Uh, uh. You know what I'm saying? Seeing that, it, it just spoke to my inner Tierra Marie. Okay, because I ain't had no daddy growing up. So I would love for my daddy to get his pit bull on. I would love that. Uh, Zach was trying to give her daddy the speech about the pods and what he saw in her. Her daddy didn't give a fuck about none of that shit. When I tell you this man was not here, to, he, he did not care. <laughs> that man did not want to hear none of that shit. So Bliss starts saying, listen, I'm sure about him. And her daddy's like, are you sure? Are you? Are you? 21 days of knowing somebody? That's crazy. I'm sorry, how are you sure? How are you sure? And she's like, well, you know what? Like the values that we have, we're not trying to head for divorce. I know how your divorce with my mom affected me. He's like, are you sure you're not trying to head for divorce? Because meeting somebody and getting married in 28 days sounds like divorce to me. It sounds like divorce to me. Do you know what 28 days of knowing somebody and walking down the aisle spells out? D-I-V-O-R-C-E. Divorce. That's what that spells out. Her daddy was not trying to hear none of that shit. None of that shit. <laughs> okay um he also brought up the fact that her older sister had a failed marriage her daddy just <laughs> yo he was on some other shit um her dad was just not supportive he was not supportive of this decision but he told her you know what i want what's best for you 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 know if you think this is what's best for you i want what is best for you did y'all catch <laughs> that moment between <laughs> Zach and Bliss's daddy where uh, Bliss, uh, I think uh, Bliss's daddy was like, you know, what are your mother's thoughts? And Zach was like, mom, mom, <laughs> I'm sorry. Bliss's daddy was like, so what are your mother's thoughts? And Zach was like, my mother's dead. She has no thoughts. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, what? It's like... <laughs> what the fuck? I can't, like... I'm a... <laughs> Zach is just going through it, okay? Y'all, we really got to come together as a congregation and keep Zach in prayer. Zach is going through it, bitch. What the fuck? What the fuck was that? You know, Zach walks away from the table, hurt. You know, it, it just, it, it just, it was, it was, her dad was cold. He was cold. It's like, damn, pull it back a little bit. God damn, it's giving Will Smith during Bad Boys. You know what I'm saying? Like, God damn, pull it back just a little I thought that was it. What's that scene in Bad Boys 2 with Lil Smith and Martin Lawrence where they met up with um Martin's daughter, uh, uh, Martin's daughter's date that one night for the prom? My God, that, that's what it was giving. It was giving, nigga, I will shoot you. <laughs> it was just giving a lot. Like, it was just, it was giving a lot. Her dad was so shady. Yeah, 20 days is crazy. Getting married in 21 days, saying that you know somebody, you love somebody in 21 days, that's crazy. But you know, what is he? He's a, he's a lawyer. Okay, I mean, that doesn't equal success. But I guess it does equal intelligence. I guess that's a good thing. He sure is a talker though. Woo. Like her dad was just, my God. He dragged Zach for film. I just, woo. Again, I felt like this was Zach's biggest nightmare. And boom, there it happened. But again, I don't feel bad for you, Zach. Because again, this was your what? Second choice. And now that I see this happening with her dad, um, it makes me question what your experiences have been. If that have, if, if a dad like this has been your experience, then so be it. This is how fathers should be about their daughters. Fathers should be ready to knock if you buck over their daughters. Do y'all agree with that? Point blank period. This is father energy. You, you're over here trying to marry my daughter. Let me, let me lay down the line for you. Now, you shouldn't be unsufferable, but still, let me lay down the, the, the law of the land for your ass. Let me let you know that you're not going to play with my daughter. Because what happens with a lot of women, again, that don't have fathers in their lives, they marry these men, and these men tend to do things to these women that they wouldn't do had the woman had a strong father in her life. Let's, be, let's have an honest conversation about that. A lot of men, if they know that you have the type of daddy in your life that will knock if you buck, they're not going to play certain games with you. Because not only do they have to answer to you, they got to answer to your daddy. Okay? And so, I'm here for it. Um, fast forward, we see Tiffany meet Brett's father and brother. That was great. I love how Brett's dad was like, okay, so how much did you pay this woman to be your wife? How much did you pay this beautiful woman to be engaged to you? And one thing about black daddies, they going to flirt. The black daddy going to flirt with your ass. I don't know what that is, but black daddy, it's a universal thing. They gonna flirt with you, okay? I loved it. I loved that for Tiffany. Um, I love that his dad pointed out what Brett said that he pointed out two things. That he's hearing Brett express himself emotionally in a way that he's never heard Brett express himself before because them, although they're, they're, they're tight-knit, they're a close family, as men, they never talk about their feelings for each other. They never express love amongst each other. So hearing Brett express himself that way, he knows that Tiffany has had a good effect on his son. And then also, um, oh, oh, this is episode, episode 11, by the way. Um, also, he says that he loves the fact that Brett kept reiterating to him that Tiffany is so supportive and understanding. He was like, you know, as black men, those are two things that we really, really need. Support and understanding. We really need that. And it just was a beautiful meetup. Again, 10, 10, 10 is across the board for Brett and Tiffany. If they don't make it, I'm, I'm, if they don't fucking make it, I don't even want to say what I'm going to do. Because I'm popping up at somebody's house. Bachelorette party, uh, the bachelorette parties was kind of whack this, this season. Is that me? Is it me or the bachelorette parties was just whack? Nothing really to talk about. They went to like these burlesque shows. Chelsea couldn't wait to show everybody her pussy print. Is it just, I mean, the way she got on that stage, she's like, let me give y'all a show. Let me show y'all this pink pussy. She couldn't wait to show off her damn pussy print. My goodness, girl. My God. 
You hear Chelsea talking to her friends, telling her friends how beautiful Kwame is and how they're such in a secure and beautiful relationship. My girl is delusional. Chelsea, you are delusional. Like, my God, like, Chelsea, girl, I love you, but baby, I cannot dwell in your delusion with you. You are delusional. You are not in a secure relationship. You are not in a supportive relationship. You are not in a beautiful relationship. You are letting that dick dickmatize you into seeing shit that is not there. Please step out of your delusion before your ass get hurt on your wedding day. Zach and Bliss are talking to their friends. They in love, child. They're saying the same things that they've said over and over again about each other. They love each other. Um, Paul talks about making a lifelong commitment. He said, making a lifelong commitment. Mind you, this is, this is somebody who about to get married to Micah. Okay, making a lifelong commitment based on the amount of information I have had thus far would accrue a huge risk. This is what Paul had to say about Micah. Just say no. Micah and Paul, don't waste our time. Get on the altar and just say no. Please, please do us all a favor. So now we get to the wedding day and it's uh, Kwame and Chelsea's wedding day. Um... I like that Kwame's sister showed up and his brother showed up. His sister's very beautiful. She had a very beautiful spirit. I love the fact that she talked to Chelsea. She went to Chelsea's, you know, uh, wedding quarters and she FaceTimed Chelsea and uh, before before their wedding day. And I, I just, I really like his sister. But watching his sister during the ceremony, all I could see was SK's mom from last season. The sister is crying, crying, but it's like, you can see the spirit of worry on her face because she knows her brother. She knows her brother. She knows her brother ain't she. She knows it. So she's sitting there with all the hope in her heart. Make us proud, brother. Do what's right. Make us proud. Girl, I'm here to I'm predicting him saying no. If Kwame says yes, if Kwame says yes, I will drink bleach. If Kwame says yes, I will come on here and I will drink a gallon of bleach for you niggas. Dead ass. I will drink bleach. If, if Kwame says yes to that girl, I will drink bleach. Period. Y'all, my bad. I'm editing the video and I forgot to include this piece of information. Did y'all see Kwame's side teeth? <laughs> You not be the best brother, you know what I mean? Not the side tooth missing. Oh, hell no. What the fuck is going on? Like, what? New Balance by the What is going on? Y'all, I, I promise you, y'all be going on the wrong shows. Why are you on Love is Blind when you are missing your side teeth? Missing side teeth are going to ruin the black community. Missing side teeth are ruining the black community. The real pandemic, the real panoramic, the real panoramic is you niggas with your missing side teeth. What is going on? What is the price of replacing side teeth? What is the price of replacing side teeth? I need to know that. Kwame, if you show up to the reunion with your, your, your side teeth still missing, we are going to have to talk about the compensation that these castmates are getting on Love is Blind. Because baby, love may be blind, but the audience isn't. We saw that big ass hole on the side of your mouth. What is happening with the side teeth? Pookie sa no bala man like I done teeth. Pookie sa. You are on love is blind when you should be on a, a, a love is a dentist. One thing about Chelsea, she gonna say Kwame's whole entire name, baby. When she got on that altar, she wrote her vows. She said that man's entire name. Alex Kwame Oluwafemi. He bombay. Orotu. She knew the entire fucking name. Okay? The entire... Like, Chelsea's been waiting all her life, oh lord, to marry some black dick. This is the moment she's been waiting for. Chelsea gives this well-thought-out vow speech. Kwame, on the other hand, you know, speaks from his heart. Uh, he says that he... Fell in love with her beautiful soul and her stunning shell made it better that she's captivating we uh, are left with chelsea saying yes and we don't know what kwame's answer is to me again i feel like kwame is gonna say no drop down in the comments let me know what you think kwame is gonna say now i don't like these previews because in these previews the way they cut it up 
it makes it seem like something really bad is going to happen between Brett and Tiffany. I don't know if they're doing that to just grasp at our attention, but please don't like, please don't piss me off. Don't piss me off. Don't piss me off. Brett, Tiffany, y'all know what y'all need to do. Get in here, say yes, and get the fuck on. I don't got the time to be emotionally attacked during black women's black Jesus rolls on the third day. So as black women still we rise month, I don't got time for it. So let's go ahead. Let's get these gowns on. Let's get this suit on. Let's go ahead and get to that altar and say yes and get the fuck on with our lives. I do not have time to play with y'all ass. I am not here to play with y'all. Okay. Now let's talk about Jackie and Marshall. I know. I know y'all are mad as me. I know, I know, I know y'all are upset because I made y'all wait to the end. <laughs> but no, I feel like this needs a whole separate discussion because not only of what happened on camera, but everything that's happened post filming. Before I even go into this, I just want to start off by saying this. Jackie, you are literally the worst cast member ever casted on this show. You are disgusting. You are a gaslighter. You are emotionally violent. You are delusional. You are a gaslighter. You are scum. Like, and if you would have told me with the way this season started that I would end up feeling this way about you, I would have called you a liar. Because you started off, like you weren't my favorite, but you started off like kind of cute. You know, with the whole comment, you know, I don't got no, I don't got no breasts. If he like breasts, he can go down to the chicken spot. You know, I was like, okay, cool. Like, this is a girl. Okay, she's a little bit of a vibe. But I really started not seeing it for you during you guys' honeymoon or not the honeymoon, but the pre-honeymoon, I guess, in Cabo, where you started calling Marshall your tonto, or if I, if Hispanics, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. But you started calling him your tonto. He's my tonto. My dumbass. I didn't see it for you then. And it's crazy because how you were dragging Irene for being a peasant is crazy because, like, you're actually the broke-ass peasant. You're broke. There's no other... Let me, let me, let me... Let me mama say mama side, mama side real quick. Let's start from the beginning. Parce que there is a lot to discuss. Let's go back to the beginning. On the beginning at episode nine. So right after Chelsea's party, uh, we go to Marshall and Jackie's apartment or whatever they're living. And we have Marshall ask Jackie straight up, listen, what do you need from me? This is post seeing her and Josh play in each other's face at the party where he was. This is post Josh being all up in her face, asking her, what's she going to do? Are you really going to marry him? Pick me. You know, they literally named that entire episode after Josh's pick me ass. Pick me. Pick me. Don't marry him. Pick me. This is also post Josh calling him an entire bitch. Like, calling him a whole bitch at that party. This is post all of these factors. And so this is post that. And so he's telling her, like, what do you need from me? How do you want me to show up in this relationship? And she's like, oh my God, like, I don't want to have this conversation. It's midnight. It's 12 at night. I don't want to have this conversation. It's like, well, when are y'all going to have this conversation? He's like, I want to have, the, we need to have this conversation. I need to know, tell me what I need to know, what I need to do to show up. And I don't know if you guys caught it, but she's like, well, I mean, I told you like what you need to do when you left, you know, like again, like she's calling you a bitch. It is what it is. You know what I mean? And she's like, then she's like, well, I mean, but you didn't do it. So anyway, we're fine. We're fine. Like, I don't need you to do anything. You don't need, you're fine. And it's like, you know, you got, you got some pretty brown eyes on you. You got some pretty brown eyes on you. It's like, bitch, what? What? Are you okay? Are you okay? And so you have Marshall who says, listen, like I was talking to Brett at the party. He gave me some advice. Like I really need to be straight up with you and I don't want to sugarcoat things, especially like from my point of view, I want to protect my feelings. I want to know where we stand. What do you need from me? And she's like, listen, I don't want to talk about this. It's midnight. I'm good. You know what I mean? And, and, and then she 
And then like she just goes behind his back and she hugs him from behind. She's like, just love me. Just love me. Just love me. And he's kind of like buying it. And I'm just like, Marshall, as I'm watching this, I'm just like, Marshall, while I don't think that you need to man up and whatever, this is cringy because the girl is bitching you. And not only is she bitching you, she's bitching you on national television. Like, I don't know what goes through you guys' minds in this experiment, but this is the fourth season. I'm assuming y'all have seen the first three seasons or at least the first two. Y'all gotta start thinking. Y'all gotta start thinking. And even if this wasn't like a relationship like a, a, that was on television, this girl has made it clear. She does not fuck with you. You literally said it yourself in the past episode. You told Brett, she's never told you that she loves you. She's told you, I fuck with you tough. She don't fuck with you, bro. She don't love you, bro. She don't like you, bro. She's told you that with her actions time and time again. So let's talk about more actions. So now, fast forward, everybody is getting fitted for their wedding dresses and getting fitted for, you know, their wedding suits. Jackie doesn't show up. Jackie doesn't show up for her fitting. Um, you have Micah who has a conversation with Tiffany and I think she was like, oh, I had a conversation with Jackie. Jackie told me she's just going through a lot and like she didn't want to come. So she's not coming. And so Tiffany being the good black wife she is, she texts her husband, Brett, was like, listen, I don't know what they let Marshall know this girl did not show up for the fitting. They are married for real. Like, they are a couple. Like, they, I don't know. Like, Tiffany and Brett are somewhere over. <laughs> they over here in La La Land, just having a good old time, having a functional relationship, and the rest of y'all are in the ghetto, okay? And so she texts him, and I love that both Tiffany and Brett have had Marshall's back. I feel like, honestly, Tiffany, Brett, Chelsea have been so good to Marshall, and I'm glad that he at least met those three people who were good to him during this experience and that who were looking out for him. Um, so Marshall tells his friends, I was just told that Jackie didn't show up for her wedding fitting. His friends basically said, like, she's trash, bro. She's trash. Like, the, the, the tall, dark one, he wasn't having that shit. He's like, yo, she's trash. This is trash. That's trash. And I don't know, like, how Marshall even saw anything past that. Like, you, you should have seen this coming. You should have seen this coming. Honestly. You shouldn't even showed up for the, for, 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 for the suit fitting. Because what were you showing up for? Because literally, literally, during your confessional at the house, when she wouldn't talk to you, you literally said, we have this beautiful relationship. And I'm like, this nigga is delusional. This, this man is delusional. What beautiful relationship do you have with this girl? And he, you said it yourself, but I don't see where this is going. Yeah, it's not going anywhere, sir. She doesn't want you. She does not want you. What don't you understand? What are you not grasping? It just really hurt me to see this man show up to get fitted for a wedding. We both know that you are not going to, bruh. Come on. And um, so anyway, Jackie didn't show up to her wedding fitting, but guess what she showed up to? She showed up to a date with who? Josh. I mean, are we surprised? Are we fucking surprised? I literally said in the last, in the last review, her and Josh need to be together. Y'all need to be together. Y'all are two dysfunctional, emotionally violent people. Y'all need to be over here. Y'all are not sane. Y'all need to leave sane people alone. Y'all need to leave people who value therapy and value emotional intelligence alone and go be over there. Y'all are toxic. Go have that toxic shit over there. Do us all a fucking favor, please. And here she go, oh my God, you bought me flowers. You bought, oh my God. As if Marshall wasn't fucking powdering your fucking pancakes. Like you're making a big deal. At the, I, I, you're making such a big deal out of this motherfucker giving you flowers that he got on the side of the road on his way to your date with you. As if you don't have a whole man back at the house who went down to the farmer's market, got fresh ingredients, made coffee to you for your ass, and was powdering your motherfucking pancakes. This bitch here is unbelievable. 
And so we have Josh who tells her, hey, his biggest regret is letting her go. And so now we get to the next episode. Episode 10, we open with Josh letting her know, listen, he didn't do a good job of communicating his feelings for her. And um, she comes out and says, listen, in her confessional, as soon as I saw Josh at Chelsea's party, I was immediately attracted to him. Immediately attracted to him. Um, all the hairs on her body stood up. She said she... The hair, all the hairs on her body was standing up for Ratatouille. Josh lets her know, listen, you know, I was not taught to show my emotions, you know, through competitions throughout out life. Here he goes bringing up competitions again. This is a competition to this man. This is a competition to this man. He says, yeah, you know, through, com through competing, I wasn't taught to, to show emotions. Um, he said that he wants to be with her. He wants to be with her. What is Jackie's response to this? Jackie flat out tells him like Marshall is too emotional for me I told him to boss up I told him to be more aggressive and he left he did the exact opposite of what I told him to do he's not man enough he wasn't man enough for me who do you think I am don't you know that you want my man like she, she she's in her Tony Braxton bag she is in her Tony Braxton he wasn't man enough for me Okay, here go that he wasn't man enough for me shit again. Josh asked her, hey, like, does Marshall know that you're meeting up with me? She said, no. He was like, you know, how do you think he's going to feel about this? She says, I don't care. I don't give a fuck. Then literally, Jackie and Josh enter into a relationship. Josh asked her, like, could you see yourself marrying, with me, marrying me? And she's like, well... I could probably down the line, but marriage scares me. That's not something I want to do right now. So, bitch, why are you on Love is Blind? Why are you on this show? The whole point of this show is to get married. Why are you on this show? Notice Jackie never brought up her family, you know, her family issues. My family, you know, there's so much going on back in my family. I do so much for my family. My family is dying. My, my dad is dying. My dad has can't. She didn't bring none of that shit up to Josh. What did she say to Josh? Mary scares her. That's not something she wants to do right now. But I could see myself being with you. And guess what? They enter into a relationship. He says, I want to be with you. She says, I want to be with you too. Boom, boyfriend and girlfriend. And then they fucking make out. They fucking make out and kiss. Mind you, she does this without even talking to Marshall first. And the thing is, like, I've seen some of the things she's posted and stuff. It's like, girl, nobody's hating on you. First of all, you wasted everybody's time. You wasted Marshall's time and you wasted our time at the viewer, as viewers. You didn't go on the show looking for love. You came on here looking for a come up. Let's be serious. Let's be serious. You weren't trying to get married. Marriage would have been a little bonus for you. But you came on here looking for a, a come up. Okay? We have to be honest with ourselves. You saw what happened with Cameron and Lauren. And here's the thing. I want to tell you guys who are looking to be contestants on this show. What happened with Lauren and Cameron. I'm going to tell y'all this every season. What happened with Lauren and Cameron will never happen again never happen again that shit was pure everybody from season one was pure in the sense that they literally had no real expectations they went in it with a pure heart they had no idea how the public was going to receive this all of the, the and, and mind you when you look at the people from season one lauren and cameron are the only ones who have been able to have longevity not in just well actually the second episode the second uh uh what was that guy's name i think the, the guy's name was brett too he had the triangle with jessica and i don't know but i think that couple's still together but lauren and cameron are literally a phenomenon i'm telling y'all right now what happened with lauren and cameron will never happen again if you're looking to have the same success as Lauren and Cameron, it will never happen again. You're not going to get the same millions of followers. You're not going to get the same publicity. You're not going to get the same sponsorships, uh, brand partnerships. You're not going to get it. You're not going to get it. It's not going to happen. What happened with Lauren and Cameron was a phenomenon. 
we were down and out as a people. The world was shut down. We were sad as fuck. We were looking for something to pick us up. And Lauren and Cameron out of nowhere resuscitated our hopes and dreams in humanity like Jesus who rose on the cross after the third day. Okay, now I might be just pushing it a little too far with that one, but y'all see what I'm trying to say. Y'all that are coming in here right now, if that's what you're looking for, I'm telling you, you're not going to get it. You're not going to be successful. You're not. And here's the thing. Four seasons in, we know what's real and we know what's fake. We know who's here to find love and we're no, we, we know who's here to play in our faces. Period. And so if you're here playing in our faces, you're not going to be successful. Jackie, you can play with everybody else. You can play in everybody's face. Love may be blind, but bitch, I am not. You did not see it from Marshall from the time he did that little two-step and, and, and that little, where, where he spun around and he did the little, the, the, from that moment where he did that on that red carpet when you guys revealed yourselves to each other, you did not want that man. You did not want that man. From the time y'all went to Cabo, and you had that whole emotional breakdown. My family, I do so much for my family. My, my, my family, my family. It's, I don't want to go back to that shit, man. I don't want to go back to that shit, man. Girl, you did not want him. You were crying because you did not want him. I don't fault you for wanting Josh. I really don't. I don't fault you for, for seeing a future with Ratatouille. But what I fault you for is playing in this man's face. That is emotional violence. That is emotional violence. You are playing with someone's emotions. And if that man had a violent react, as a matter of fact, let's talk about violence. Let's talk about violence. But see, you wanted him to be aggressive with you, right? Then we start, when he started clapping in your face, you ain't like that shit. Let's talk about violence. So, so post her date with Josh, now you have her being home and you have Marshall coming home from the, I get the, the, the suit fittings. He comes home um, and she's home. Let me say this before I continue. Um, that meetup with Jackie and Josh, that wasn't the first time they met. Now, I'm going to keep it a hundred with y'all. That was not the first time that they met. Do y'all believe that was the first time that they met? Now, I don't know if production was aware that they already met up and was like, hey, can y'all do this meetup also for camera? But I'm here to tell you that I got too many vibes from them. That was not the first time that they linked up at all. At all. They linked up before. Okay? I'm here to tell you, as somebody who has been on previous productions, them two linked up before. That wasn't their first time. Um, so Marshall comes home and Marshall needs answers. He says, listen, immediately, why did you accept my proposal? Because see, this is post her not showing up for her wedding fitting, for her wedding dress fitting. He's like, why did you, why did you, up, why did you accept my proposal? And she's like, you know what? Everything was good in the pods, but you know, we just let the outside world get to us. You know, I'm just emotionally drained. You know, she not, she can't give him what he wants. Marshall says, I have never asked anything of you. I've never asked anything of you and everything has been on your terms. And here, Marshall, this is where you fucked up. This is where a lot of people fuck up. Why are y'all entering into relationships and not asking anything of your partner? That whole, let's, I'm going to just rock with it. No. Especially in a situation such as this where you're getting married. You have to make your expectations known up front. Marshall, you bring so much to the plate. Why are you not requiring anything of someone that, you, as a matter of fact, you're bringing the entire table to? She brings nothing of value to you. She cute. That's it. But we've never seen this girl bring anything to you in this process. Nothing. Nothing. Not even in the physical, not even in the emotional, not even spiritual. The girl brings zero to your table. So why are you not requiring that she does anything for you? And, and, and again, we have to think about that. Is it because she's your preference? Would you have had that approach if she looked like me? Just a thought. I'm not saying that's what it is, but 
Just a thought. So, Jackie flat out says to Marshall, I can't be with you. I cannot be with you. I cannot give you what you want. And Marshall, again, ask her the right question. Do you want to be with Josh? And she says, I don't even see myself being with Josh. Not you, bitch. Not you who just... Are you, are you, are you out of your fucking mind? Not you. Did you just not... Like, didn't you just become boyfriend and girlfriend with Josh? And again, I'm going to be addressing some of the things I saw her post on her IG because I saw them as I was recording this video. But again, that coffee shop was not their first link up. So the girl is full of shit. She's full of shit. Instead of going to your wedding dress fitting, you showed up to a date with Josh? Y'all made out with each other? You guys entered into a... Bitch, you don't think we're gonna see this shit on television? You do know you did that in front of the cameras, right? Like, you do know it's on film, right, bitch? Like, are you, are you, are you fucking dumb? Something is psychologically wrong with you. Literally. Something is not, like, you're, you're not okay. You're not fucking okay. You actually don't need a therapist. You need a white jacket. No, you need a white jacket. Because this is crazy. And then she's still not telling Marshall the truth. That she entered into a whole relationship with Josh. She does say that they met up. But she doesn't tell him that she entered an entire relation into an entire relationship with this man. Listen to this again, because remember on her IG, she's going to say that, oh no, the coffee shop and her breakup scene with Marshall was shot out of sequence. But she said to Marshall, she met up with Josh. So again, that coffee shop scene was not the first time she linked up with him. So let me tell y'all again, like I always tell y'all, love is blind, but bitch, Jesse Wu is not. I am not stupid. I know how production works. Them people, them people found out that Jackie and Josh were already dating and said, uh, 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 you're under contract. We need this for television. Point blank period, bitch. Play with your mama. Don't play with me. Next. And so, um, Marshall says, I want my ring back. I want my ring back. And this bitch said, I'm keeping the ring. When I tell you I wanted to fucking break my television, I wanted to reach through the television and choke this bitch. I could not be Marshall's sister. Where is Marshall's sister? Where is Marshall's sister? Where are his cousins? Where are his aunties? Girl, you would not have made it out of that house with my ring on. I'm just let you know. Marshall is a good man, Savannah. Because that whole response, oh, you know what? You can keep the ring, but every time you look at it, it'll be, you'll, you'll have to remember that you passed up a good thing. Marshall, this broke-ass bitch is not going to be looking at that ring. She's going to pawn that shit the first chance he gets. That, that ring is already down to the pawn shop. She's broke. She's a broke bitch. She has nothing going for herself. Nothing. Nothing. Oh, I'm going to keep the ring because, you know, you gave it to me. You know, But no, no, no. No, 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 no. Here's the thing. Rings, wet, like engagement rings are investments, number one. He invested in you with the belief that you were going to marry him. Literally has a contract stating that through, the, through his precipitation, precipitation, through his precipitation <laughs> on this show. He participated in this show for marriage. That is an investment. And then he has this show to back that up. You knew you did not want to marry him. Why would you want to keep his ring? And then like knowing what you've done with Josh, and we're going to get more into Josh, but knowing what you've done, knowing the things you've said about this man on camera, you're going to keep his ring. Bitch, let me tell you something. Josh, uh, I, I, I'm sorry. Uh, 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 what's it? Marshall is better than me. First of all, Marshall, she bitched you again. Like, it's like she bitched you again. I'm sorry. I would have told her, yeah, you know what? Keep the ring. And my sisters, my cousins, the police would have been outside. I need my ring back. I need my ring. I need my ring back immediately. Or you will be escorted by the police. I will be filing a police report. I will be suing you. Like, I, I'm sorry. No. My cousins, my sister would have been outside, bitch. You, you can go, but the ring stays. You can go, but your ring finger and the ring stays, bitch. How do you want to play this? Do you want to go full out Game of Thrones? What are you doing? Do we want to have a 48 hours episode? What are we fucking
fucking doing? And see, you can't, you, you wouldn't even be able to blame Marshall for having that type of reaction because you're emo like you incite violence, girl. What in the entire fuck was that? You broke ass bitch. I know you went straight to the pawn shop. I know you went straight to the pawn shop with that fucking ring because you a broke ass bitch. You broke. You are broke. You are the peasant that you were calling Irene. Remember how you were calling Irene a peasant? You are the actual peasant. You're a fucking broke ass bitch. And how the fuck did you make me hate you more than Princess Fiona? How do you run past Micah, Irene, Kwame, Bar Bar Barista? How do you run past all of these motherfuckers from all these past seasons as the worst Love is Blind contestant of all fucking time? Give that man his ring back. Give that, when y'all have this reunion, Nick and them, when y'all have this reunion, I want to see that ring in Marshall's hand, period. Or a check that equals to the amount. Period. You're going to get an understanding in this bitch. Then she tells Marshall, take care, see you around, or maybe not. And he was like, no, you absolutely won't. You absolutely won't. Um, honestly, Jackie needs her ass beat. Jackie needs her fucking ass beat. And there was so much of a difference between her exit interview and Marshall's interview. Marshall was saying, you know, I wish her the best. It didn't work out. I wish her the best. She's like, I don't care. I don't give a fuck. She's like, I'm not apologizing. I don't give a fuck that I don't want to be with this man. I don't want to be with this man. I don't care. Maybe I'm crazy. No, you're not crazy. You know exactly what you did. You just need your ass beat, Jackie. Like, you need... I'm sorry. I could not be Marshall's sister. I would have been outside. What's up? What's up? Somebody gonna leave this bitch. It's not gonna be you. The ring stays. So, what we doing? What are we doing? What we doing, puss asshole? Put my motherfucking brother's ring the fuck down, puss asshole. I die by mine. Come outside, ho. Come outside, puss asshole. Cause I'm about to catch a case. I could not be Marshall's sister. Girl, I would have caught a case on your ass. For real, for real. I would have caught a case for Marshall. If Marshall were my brother, I would have caught a case for his ass. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to jail. So, before we get into her and Josh, actually, I want to talk about this tweet that I found. This was tweeted June 30th, 2022. So, it looks like there's this account on Twitter that was giving out a lot of tea on the upcoming season of Love is Blind. You know, back in 2022, we didn't know about these people. So it looks like, you know, they shot this in early 2022, okay? So this account right here tweeted this. Can y'all see that? I hope y'all can see this tweet. I'm gonna read it out loud. Um, so this Twitter account, this was tweeted June, 23rd, June 30th, 2022. Jackie and Marshall, mind you, they're giving a breakdown of a lot of things that happened that, that are going to that we're going to see on camera or things that happened during filming of this next Love is Blind season. Jackie and Marshall, they seem to hit it off from the get go, but things went south when they arrived to Seattle from Mexico. Marshall reported that he found herpes medicine in Jackie's bag in Cancun and was upset that she didn't divulge that information. Also, he was frustrated. Now, girl, you out here giving Marshall the herps? You was trying to give him the herps? Not you trying to give that man the herps. Now, I don't know how credible this is. Uh, because they hadn't had sex yet, Jackie's defense was that she and some of her friends thought Marshall was gay, which made her feel uncomfortable. At the final party where all the original cast members were, Jackie met Josh, who confessed that Jackie was his first choice. This is all from the Twitter account. It's there. It's, 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 it's literally all there. Then uh, you have these text messages that surface. So it looks like Jackie was in a group chat with some of her friends. My thing with this is what happened to non-disclosure agreements? Like I would think if you're participating in Love is Blind, a show like that, where the success of the show the, literally depends on the suspense of where these couples are going to end up, I would think y'all would have to sign NDAs. What the fuck is going on? 
what the fuck is going on? So apparently, one of Jackie's friends um, released these text messages. So there's this TikTok that some of y'all have been tagging me in. Uh, this young lady, she kind of breaks down um, what's going on with these text messages. I'm gonna read the text messages to you, but she kind of said the same thing that I'm saying, which is, "Girl, what happened to the what happened to the NDAs? Y'all don't sign NDAs no more." First of all, you can see some of these screenshots are DMs that she's sending friends. So there's one DM where it's a picture of her and Jaws, and she's saying, "You know, that's my baby." Then also, like, you have these text messages of her in the group chat where she literally just admits that she did the show for clout. You did the show for clout. You didn't really like this guy. Um, she also goes on to say things like, um, there's one text message that I, I just really didn't care for where she says, um, but he for sure gave me vibes cause he used to twerk on the bed and I told him that, it, that I was cool off that and he was like, yeah, so now, so now this time I told him to be more aggressive with me. He's hard for show, sure, but sometimes he can be sweet. So you're, you're calling him gay to your friends because he was twerking on the bed. And, and here's the thing. Have I ever had a man twerk in bed with me? No. But Marshall literally comes across as someone who has a lot of joy. Like, yeah, he has a lot of trauma that he's talked about. And in this experience, you know, you have to be emotional. You have to talk about your emotions a lot. But when Marshall had his happy moments, he danced. He did the same thing when you saw him, when you guys were unveiled to each other. He did the same thing. He looked at his butt. He did, he did the, the, the little walk. Like, that's what he did when he was happy. So why stick it out? And I'm sorry. I know that Marshall has been a good sport. But him having to address his sexuality with this tweet, the only sugar I, I got goes on those fucking pancakes. Yes, I love this read. But also, I'm really appalled that this man has to address his sexuality publicly because of your bitch ass. Like, this is disgusting. Dead ass. There's a video of her and Josh being at a, uh, I think it's a baseball game together. And it's just like, girl. Not you having the nerve to call this man sweet, but you were in Mexico with herpes medication. Let's be for real. Let's be fucking for real. Let's be fucking for real. So then, um, I went to her page just to see like if she's uploaded everything, anything in regards to this. Cause I know, I know the internet be, been, the internet been eating her ass the fuck up. So then she posted this today and I'm going to read this for you guys. She says, I have seen the latest episodes that have premiered on Love is Blind and I must speak the truth. Marshall and I were broken up before I saw Josh at the coffee shop. Let me stop you there. That makes no sense because Josh literally asked you, does Marshall know that we're here? Why would he ask you that if he knew? Because I'm pretty, if you broke up with Josh, if you broke up with Marshall, I'm pretty sure you would have made that clear to Josh while filming. We already broke up. We're broken up. We're not together anymore. Your response to him was not that. Your response was, I don't care how he feels. That was your response. No, he doesn't know we're meeting up. I don't care how he feels. That was your response, bitch. Play with everybody else. Don't play with me. Okay? That was your fucking response. Next, Marshall and I were broken up before I saw Josh at the coffee shop. I'm wearing different clothes. My hair is styled different. And at the end of the video, I say, I don't know if I'm going to be with Josh. Um, literally, all you have to do is put your head in a ponytail. This is the end of the day. I'm pretty, most of us, whatever clothes we go out in and we spend the day in, by the time we come home, we shower, we decompress, we change clothes. Girl, this don't prove nothing. This don't prove a damn thing. Because see, even then, at when you actually met up with Marshall at home, you still didn't tell Marshall, I am in a relationship with Josh. You said you met up with him, but you kept it very, very general. You didn't tell him he and I are together now. Girl, fuck you. And again, I'm going to give Jackie the benefit of the doubt that the producers most likely did have her come on camera to record this. But again, listen to what she said to Marshall. I met up with Josh. So... I actually think she's telling the truth about this scene being shot out of sequence. 
But it doesn't negate the fact that you already were meeting up with Josh. You already were dating Josh. You and Josh were already together. And you did not disclose that to Marshall. So all these scenes that we see you being frustrated with Marshall, the fact that you were leaving bright and early in the morning before Marshall would even get up, you would be gone for most of the day. Bitch, you were with Josh. Stop fucking playing. When you come to the reunion, you need to prove that you were not with Josh before they made you shoot that scene. If you can't prove that shit, leave this shit in the fucking drafts, period. I am not sure what the reason is for playing the coffee shop date before the breakup, but to restate, Marshall and I were broken up before. Josh and I had our coffee shop date. As for the ring, Marshall did not pay for the ring. Love is Blind paid for all the rings. We don't give a fuck who paid for it. Give it back to Marshall. He gave it to you. I don't give a fuck if Marshall got a check from Love is Blind. I don't give a fuck if, Mar if, if Love is Blind bought the rings. They gave it to Marshall to give to you. Give it back. You broke bitch. Give it the fuck back. You're poor. Give it back. We don't want to hear it. Love is blind, bitch. I ain't blind. Okay? And literally, the comments are eating her ass up. They're saying the same thing I'm saying right now. That don't make no sense. I'm happy that this Love is Blind reunion is going to be live because from what I am thinking, I hope it's not a pre-recorded live, but if it's actually live, that'll give you a chance to bring your receipts. Here's the thing though, you'd only be able to clear that up. Other than that, the fact that you didn't give this man his ring back, I don't give a fuck who bought the ring. You should have gave it back. The fact that in your exit interview, you literally said you don't care. You did not care how he felt. You said it to Josh too, you did not care. You've been nothing but emotionally violent to this man. That's not going to erase what you've done throughout the season. But if I were you, I would bring your receipts. That's the only thing that can semi save you from this last episode. The only thing. Anyway, y'all, I know this wasn't probably as, as the other ones, but it was just too much shit going on. Let me know what you think about this review. Drop down in the comments. Let me know what you thought about these episodes. Will y'all be watching the reunion? Oh, actually we still gotta watch these weddings. Damn, so we still got, these weddings to get through them. I already gave my predictions. I look forward to watching the weddings. I look forward to seeing the reunion. I'm going to be in Jamaica. So I'm going to try to do my reviews as fast as I can. But I'm actually going to Jamaica with Ebony Magazine. I'm going to Jamaica Carnival. This is the trip of a lifetime. I'm so fucking excited. I leave on Wednesday. I'm so excited. I cannot wait to share this trip with you guys. Um, also, y'all, I sang at... The Hawks basketball game this past this past weekend. Um, I sang on what Friday night. Friday Friday night. I sang at the Hawks game. Let me do. In your monitors. Yeah. So how does this?
Thank you so much to the Hawks, Shamia, Melissa Proctor. Thank you so much for everybody who had a hand in me doing this. Child, I thought I was going to have more time to do, to do the anthem during rehearsals. I came in there, oh, say, can you see? And they were like, yeah, girl, uh-uh. We only got 90 seconds, baby. Leave that churchness at the door. 90 seconds. So I had to rush through the anthem, but it still came out good. I'm really, really happy. It's something I've always wanted to do live. I did do it during the pandemic um, for the Sixers, I believe. Um, so it's great that I got to do this live. Anyway, y'all, thank you so much for supporting me. Please like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.